basically in a nutshell, we just haven't, we just haven't got to it. Good morning, beautiful people. It is a fine, beautiful fall morning, crisp, even. I guess I'll get right to it. Uh, a lot of you, and I mean a lot of you, we get this comment almost every video. Any video that this thing is in the background, how come you guys haven't skirted it yet? Where is the underpinning? Yada yada, we get it every single video. Happy to inform you, this is that video. So I guess a little, little explanation as to why we haven't, we just haven't. Uh, it's been on the list of things to get to and we just haven't got to it yet. Uh, mind you, we've lived in this thing for three years now. If you guys have been with us from the beginning, you know that when we got here, this thing was a, a heaping pile of garbage and we, uh, we completely gutted it and redid it and resided it. Like we redid this, this single wide inside and out. It's very comfortable, overly insulated the, uh, the underbelly. So the winters haven't been that bad. We're actually pretty comfortable. As we have, you know, lived in it, I only think about doing the underpinning when it's cold. You know, I can tell when it's winter, but I mean, that's that's how it goes anywhere, anywhere you live. Really, the only time that it's kind of miserable in that thing is when we have a lot of really cold, below freezing temperatures uh, and the wind blows. And that's the only time it's really miserable. We don't get wind very often, but a lot of times uh, during winter, we do get those winter storms. Basically, in a nutshell, we just haven't, we just haven't got to it. I'm finally getting to it. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to live in this thing another winter without dealing with the underpinning. Um, there's all sorts of things like the back deck and stuff like that that it's really getting annoying not having. I would like to be able to use my back door on this thing. We'll get to that soon enough too. But for right now, I'm going to tackle the underpinning. Um, now, kind of a gripe. Uh, I have not been able to buy the materials that I wanted to underpin it with. Um, I'm actually changing how I'm going to do it. It's one of those things. Every time we talk about it, every time I think about doing it, it's like, yeah, I'll do it this way. And then, well, I can't find the stuff that I want to use, or I don't want to take the time to do yada yada. You guys get the message. And that's how it gets to three years that we've lived in this thing and we have not done it yet. How I'm doing it, uh, I guess I'll just show you as I go along. It's nothing crazy. It just needs to be buttoned up. So I'm going to get to work. Essentially, in a nutshell, uh, the way I'm going to do this, I'm just using uh, center blocks, the solid ones. I'm just going to lay the blocks down as a footer. I had originally wanted to pour a footer, but I'm just not going to do it. The skirting that was on this thing when we got here was literally a heavy-duty tarp. I've never seen that. It looked very, very janky. Um, that was one of the first things we pulled off and threw away. Uh, this one, it looks like they had started to do some sort of, like, framing there was a, a little bit more basically this this section right here was the only bit that was done I would say right uh, but it's it's two by fours half buried on the ground uh, I'm gonna do a row of block set pressure treated on top of that and then basically do the framing just like they did the framing is not structural but it will be attached to the underside uh, and then I'm just gonna use uh, t111 for the siding uh, I had originally wanted to use metal I can't find the metal that I want uh, in a color I want uh, within 50 miles. It's out of stock everywhere. I could order it from places. There are places I could order it from, but I'm just not gonna do that. I can get this stuff. I can paint this stuff. This stuff is easy to come by. It's easy to replace if I need to. So I'm just gonna use this stuff. The well house is made out of, like it's, it's clad in that stuff and it's holding up just fine. So I figure it'll be just fine for this thing. All right, I'm gonna grab tools and get to work. Are you inspecting? You're not gonna be able to get under the mobile home and you're probably not gonna be too happy about it, are you, Millie?
got my first course ran. There's a there's a little bit of wiggle that I need to get out of there. But now basically how it's gonna work is I'm gonna slap a two by four on top of that. And that's gonna be what I tie my uh, uprights to. Uh, and then I'll take the sheeting and sheet up against the uprights. They're kind of like, they're studs and there's gonna be studs. Uh, just none of this is load bearing. I'm gonna tap them in there, hopefully cut them kind of tight so it does actually kind of go around the outside most edge. The only problem with making them tight is if I make, you know, each one progressively tighter as we go, eventually I'm gonna get back to number one and I will have jacked the thing up just by going, you know, a minute amount at a time. So I'm gonna try not to do that and have to re-level this thing in the whole skirting process because re-leveling kind of takes a minute. But that's the gist of it. That, I think that was the worst part. That's the longest part is uh, doing that first course. I've thought about just cementing these in. It would be a little more permanent, but the skirting that was on here before we got here was not permanent. So this should be fine. It will be fine. This will be more than fine. It'll be nice not having that freezing cold wind in the middle of winter blow underneath our house. All right, I'm gonna get started uh, putting the wood on here. It'd be nice. Uh, I bought enough material. I can do at least one side. Uh, I didn't sit down and figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I knew how I wanted to do it. Wasn't sure how much material to buy. So I just bought just, you know, just a little bit just to get started. That way I can get an idea of how much it's going to take for the rest. And that's kind of working backwards. Usually I like to, uh, you know, figure out how much I need for a job and buy that much, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it this way or what. And now that I'm into it, it's like, okay, no problem. First side is done. This was my trial run. See if I like it. I think it's gonna work. Shouldn't be too many wonky cuts. Looks pretty good. The boys went walking by and they're like, wow, that looks professional. It's like, thank you. I think that's gonna work, I like that. I'm gonna go eat some lunch real quick and then uh, get back out here. And I'm gonna throw some sheeting up on it. The main thing, now that I've got kind of a, a rough estimate of how much material it's gonna take, a lot of two by fours. There's gonna be a lot of two by fours, a lot of cinder blocks, but hey, what I'd originally wanted to use was metal. I explained that earlier. 
I actually think this, the sheeting is going to be pretty good. Uh, I can cut it with a saw. I don't have to get out the tin snips or a grinder. So it actually worked out. I don't know why it took me so long. That looks wonderful. I have more to do. I do have more to do, but I'm running out of two by fours. I only have five two by fours left. So if it's about five two by fours in uh, 14 feet, now I have a takeoff. It took a sheet plus 17 inches. So yeah, I gotta get Meg. All right, boss lady approves. I have some major leaf blowing that I have to do before I continue on. And I'm gonna have to go pick up more two by fours. But I'm gonna go down the front side first, since it's the side we see. Reason for that is I'm actually going to uh, put an underlayment down underneath the thing. And all of our prevailing wind blows that direction. So if I put the underlayment now, I'm gonna have to, it's gonna be a pain in the butt because I have to get the underlayment down and then, you know, put the side, the. Uh, the skirting up. So instead of that, I'm going to side this side and this side, and that'll block the prevailing wind. I'm going to get all the leaves blown out from under first, and then I'm going to put the underlayment down underneath, and then I can finish the other side while it's you know all open and light. So there's a few more things in between, but we're started, and I think it'll go pretty fast now that I've done one wall gonna go pretty quick so I'm gonna clean up a little bit we got some stuff to do this afternoon and uh, yeah I'm stoked Man, we need some rain. It is so dusty. Luckily, we, we had rain this past weekend, but it's starting to get pretty dry. I blew out from under this whole thing. It needed it anyways. It was, you know, the leaves fall and then the wind blows, then it works its way underneath. And there wasn't a ton under there, but it was time. All right, it smells like Meg's cooking dinner. I think I'm gonna go inside and see what she's doing. Get this heavy, heavy blower off my shoulders. All right, lady. Hey, hey. I hope this is actually ready because it's time to eat dinner. Oh. All right. Ooh. Ooh. For your eating pleasure tonight, 
uh, fajitas, actually. So, oh yeah, that's way better. Oh yeah, look at that, that's good. Oh, falling apart, yes. you ruined it. I did, I ruined it, that was the plan. So I had a couple beef roast and like, you know, a package of steaks and like random cuts that were it's in the freezer. Not enough for a meal. It's not enough for a whole meal. So I threw it in here with some Worcestershire sauce, salt, pepper, garlic, water about halfway up. And I've been slow cooking it for like, I don't know, four hours. It was like half frozen when I put it in. So it's been slow cooking till it's shredding and falling apart. So I'm about to fry up some onions and peppers from the freezer. Don't even have to chop them up, thank goodness, because <laughs> I don't want to chop up onions right now. Um, and then we'll just mix it together in tortillas. Awesome. All right. Yeah, you guys will probably remember all of the peppers and onions that we cut up this summer. It's really cool. Like it's a pain having to chop totally endless peppers yes. and onions and stuff like that. But man, it is nice just being able to go in the freezer, grab a bag of this and a bag of that. And totally. Drop it's it kind of like a... the, what is it? Cry, or buy once, cry once or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's like cry once, eat many times without having to cry anymore. <laughs> something like that. Something like that. <laughs> Good. Brett is on his second. He is. And enjoying it. <laughs> Jack's almost done. And Tyler and Corbin are yep. already done. That was very good. And, and you're, and you're done. done. This is the end of the vlog. That's it. <laughs> you <laughs> made it to the end of the day. <laughs> Alright, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.